and welcome to an Everyday Canines video. This is Distance Handling 101 Foundation Skills. We're now going to be progressing our two bowl game. So in the last video we looked at introducing two bowls and getting our dog to work between them. If you haven't done that, jump back and do that. Now we're going to be looking at adding an obstacle, but it's not a typical agility obstacle. I get mine, I've got four of these now, and I've acquired them over the course of time from people who've had building projects and they don't need them anymore. Um, just by picking up second hand sometimes. If you haven't got a traffic cone, you want to look for an object like this, but that's sturdy. So this isn't going to fall off over if the dog bumps into it. And it's got a nice big base. And I like a big base because it means the dog isn't going to come in too tight to it. When we actually move on to things like jump wings, they've got feet. And if the dog gets too tight to a jump wing when they're jumping, they actually knock it down. So we want to start fairly early on teaching our dog to have a distance away from the actual upright that they're working on. So that's why a traffic cone works amazingly for this. It's got the solid base that the dog has to go around, but it's also quite narrow and the dog, I can see over it to guide the dog. If you hadn't got a cone, there are obviously cheap cones you can buy. They tend to be flimsy and fall over the place. I'm not keen on that. You could use um, a bin or a linen basket upturned, again, so something solid that the dog has to move around. I want something that's relatively wide, as I said, to give a, I don't want a too tight turn. If you go too tight, then when the dog moves on to a jump, they're more likely to be taking poles and wings because they'll try and, you can't, she can't turn that tight on a wing. It sounds, sounds counterintuitive because we talk about having tight wing wraps, but there's actually a limit to how tight a dog should be. And if they are actually jumping too tight, they can't actually make the turns properly. And that's especially true if they start to do round the backs, they can't actually jump properly. So they have to actually be able to do a quite, it's not a loose turn, but it's a wide a wide circle rather than a very tight circle. You see people do really, really tight circles with their dogs and that's actually not useful when we move on to equipment. So I say the traffic cone works really well because it does encourage that nice loopy wideness without being so wide that you're, you're getting huge turns that are wasting you time. It's that happy balance between not too tight, not too wide. So if you haven't got this, Think of other things you might have in your household that you got, upturned bins, a wash basket. Don't use anything like a chair that's got the ability for the dog to go under it and through it. So any, it has to be something solid. So if I had a chair here, then Magpie could just go underneath it and then that's not achieving what I want. It's got to be something they can go around. I've done this game when I've been sitting out and on kind of train, training the day and I just want to do something to keep her amused. I've done it with a tra training bag and just dumped my training bag down and done this you know, it's anything like that. It's just got to just find the right ob object. But traffic cones, if you can get them from, if you look around, they're not, actually not too bad to get hold of. And I really do like these. I use them a lot. So what we're now going to be introducing is we're going to be introducing the concept of Magpie is going to be working around an obstacle to the two bowls, which are the um, reward placement. And she's got to be doing that gradually working away from me. So she's got to learn the idea that I go out and find an obstacle even if mum is not nearby. But we're going to start it really simple because if I was to start this going to the hard version that we eventually get to, Magpie will just go, she'd cut in front of it, she wouldn't pick up the obstacle. So this is about teaching value for the obstacle as well as the understanding that you go back and forth. I'm going to start with myself right up close to the cone. This is going to hopefully prevent her from cutting in front of me because what I want is I want to see her going around this cone. I don't want to have her cutting in front of me. This could be, imagine this is like a jump wing and that's the jump there, okay? What do we want? We want the dog to pick up and go over the jump. We don't want them cutting in unless we've told them to. Different story. We're going to start by having the bowls out either side and she knows the two bowl game. Now, if your dog is not as familiar with this game as Magpie, what you could do is start with a game of two bowls without the cone. And then what you could do is stop and put the cone or whatever obstacle is there. And now we're going to put the two bowls out. Wait. And I could have them tighter than that. I quite like them there. Oh, you're so excited. But I could have them as tight as there, but I don't want them that tight. I want them like that. Pi, wait. Now, when I release her, I want her to be playing the two bowl game just like we did. Okay. Nice. And I'm going to be throwing the sweetie in. Nice. Yes. 
Yes. Now, if she wasn't as confident as she is, and she was unsure, Pi, wait, I could have these much further forward. This is just a two ball game with just a slight obstacle in the way. And as long as she knows the two ball game, yes, she's not gonna be too bothered. And then I can start moving them back to build up. So we're shaping this idea that I go around something to get to my bowls. Good girl, ready, go get it. Now just pick them up. Second. So this is the basics of it. We're teaching them, get your nose out of the treats, teaching the understanding. I go back and forth to the bowls and there's an obstacle here. Now at this point when the bowls are here, and even when they're here, she's not got to think too much about this obstacle. It's just something that's there in the way, but she's not really thinking too much about it. Once I see she's going confidently back and forth, now I want to start adding her, so she's actually having to think a little bit about where this is and then she's got to drive around it. So I'm gonna move them a bit further back from me, but I'm gonna still hold my position. Now I'm getting her to do a curve towards me. The reason for that is that actually it's quite hard to throw at the distance with the bowls. The bowls are there, but they're not too far away from me. Cause I wanted to do this, this archy curve because at this point in time, I want to make it quite straightforward for me to get the treats into the box bowls. If I have them too far out, then it's going to be a different story. They might start bouncing around. Okay. So here we go. Yes. And even with them there, I've managed to bounce that one out. Yes. Depending on your treats. Yes. Depends on how. Yes. Yes. Well, they sit in the bowl. Now I'm telling her yes as she goes round. So she knows she's yes. You could do this with a clicker. Yes. Good girl, go get it. Okay, so you can see very quickly we're building up that understanding. Sit, play, sit, wait. Okay, now she's getting that idea. I'm going to test her understanding. I'm going to have the balls wait where I said before, but I'm going to take a little pace back. It's not quite the width of my foot, sorry, the length of my foot. Sit. It's just enough that there's a gap that if she chose to, she could come round. Now, Magpie's experience at this game, the odds of her coming, sit, sit, wait. The odds of her coming between me are very slim, but if you've got a dog that's very new to this, then there is a possibility they will. If they come through the gap, you just, you just withhold the reward. You know, you wait and you see if they pick up and go around. If they don't, you can just move in a little bit and start again and then work out, but work out in smaller fractions. So it's just giving that opportunity for them to, to see what works and what doesn't work. So this is what shaping is all about, giving them the chance to work it out for themselves. Okay. Yes. 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 And do you see my hand mechanics? Yes. I've got the treats in either hand, yes. When she does that side, I reward from this hand, yes. When she does this side, I reward from this hand, yes. I'm not crossing over my body. Obviously, if you need to, because you don't have dexterity to do that. Yes, good girl. Can you wait? Then you can, but ideally, you work your hands either or, and I'm giving very little in the way of body motion. I'm just saying yes and throwing in the treats. I am not, I am not doing this. I am not shaping it with my arm. Because traditionally when we teach something like wrapping a comb, what we would do is we'd shape it with the, there's to be something around there and the dog would be taught to come here and move around and we'd use a lot of body language, okay? We're not doing that. She's having to choose to do that all on her own. So it's very limited movement for me. She's not even got a word, apart from when I tell her okay, which means you can stop sitting and get on with the job. And as you can see, she's got such high value that she would do that anyway. But apart from saying okay, there's no verbals, apart from saying, yes, I like that. Or if you've got a clicker, clicking that to tell her that's what you want. That's your next stage of your game. I want you to be able to work that until you've got a nice space. Meh, what's that? About a couple of feet. I want you to be able to work it, and I want your dog to be able to do the repetitions without ever cutting through. You're going to have times when your dog's first learning this when they will cut through. 
they'll think the shortest route to the box. That's when you've got to hold your ground and wait. So supposing she did that, supposing she cut through there, I'd wait. I'd see what the dog did. If the dog then came back forward through again, I would appreciate that we need to take a step back and go closer to the count. What I'd like to see, however, is the dog experiment, come through, get nothing, and then go think about it and push out round. That's where we want to get to that stage. So if they have a moment where they do come across, you say nothing. You don't say no, you don't say oh, or you, you don't reset them. You just stay quiet and you wait. If, as I say, they repeatedly do that, then you need to take a step back and move further forward. You don't necessarily have to close the gap completely, but you have to take it back and help the dog. But if they make one failure, even a couple, let them think about it and work it out for themselves. So now we've got to this stage, this is where you're going to work to next, and then we're going to build up to start looking like we're doing some proper distance handling. So I hope you've enjoyed this Everyday Canines video, and if you have, you might not subscribe to the YouTube channel, and you can check us out on Facebook and Instagram. And I hope to see you all again very, very soon.